Following in the footsteps of Splatoon, Nintendo has been hard at work on another original concept, ARMS. With its colorful visuals, catchy music, and slick controls, it really is a joy to play. And I spent a few hours with a new version of the game at Nintendo's European headquarters this week and have returned with loads of capture in tow. In many ways, ARMS sits right at home next to games like Power Stone and Smash Brothers, fighting games with a focus on movement and stage design. It also channels the dual stick action of Sega's Virtual Lawn, a favorite of mine. And a big part of the appeal of these games stems from the presentation. A high frame rate is an absolute must here, as are bright, colorful visuals. Thankfully, this is Nintendo we're talking about here, so it should come as no surprise that performance has taken the top spot. But how about the rest? Well, with the director of Mario Kart 8 acting as producer this time and staff from Mario Kart 8 working on the game, it certainly feels like ARMS is a continuation of Mario Kart 8's technology. From the frame alternating four player mode to the general look and feel, Mario Kart 8's influence on the visuals is pretty strong here. But that doesn't mean ARMS doesn't feel original. The stylized characters look very different from your typical Nintendo offering, and each one is supremely detailed in close-ups. Animation work is solid, and the stages are beautifully designed. When playing in single-player mode or viewing a replay then, ARMS runs at a full 1080p. But when playing in two- or four-player split-screen mode, this is dropped down to 900p instead. With an aggressive filtering in place, image quality appears somewhat fuzzier than the likes of Mario Kart 8, but the jagged edges are at least minimized here. The main focus, though, is clearly one of performance, and, well, look at this. A completely horizontal red line. Performance was 100% stable throughout our time with the game, both in handheld mode and when playing as a console. I captured a full hour and a half of video at this event, and never once did the frame rate buckle. It may not come as much of a surprise, of course, as Nintendo has a history of delivering consistent levels of performance in most of its games, but it's great to see that, even in this unfinished build, it's already silky smooth. And that's important to an experience like this. In a game like ARMS, any slowdown could have an impact on the way the action feels. This kind of stable performance really helps ARMS feel like a lost arcade game in many ways. Just for good measure then, here's what we see in the full screen mode. With an increase in resolution to full 1080p, it's great to see that this holds stable as well. And while this is perfect for single player games, it's also possible to enjoy ARMS in full screen by networking the game with others. It's still not clear what Nintendo has lined up for any sort of online play, but at least you can link up multiple Switch consoles together and play using either the built-in screen or a bunch of TVs. So whether you're in two-player split-screen or full-screen mode, you can expect a rock-solid 60 frames per second. The one compromise in performance, though, comes from the four-player split-screen mode. It's not a huge surprise, but it is a tad disappointing, as dropping the game to 30 frames per second has a noticeable impact on fluidity. The four-player mode is already very chaotic, and cutting the performance in half certainly does not help. What's interesting here is that ARMS uses the same frame alternating technique that we saw in Mario Kart 8. The left side updates, followed by the right side, before returning back to the left. Effectively, the system is updating at 60 frames per second, but each side only sees half of these updates, resulting in an effective 30 frames per second experience for players. For this reason, we had to limit the analysis to just one side of the image, but well, there you go. So the rundown here is pretty simple then. You have 60 frames per second locked in full screen and two player mode, and 30 frames per second in the four player split screen. The full screen mode is full 1080p, and split screen in all modes is 900p. Pretty simple, right? And that's basically the long and short of it. It's a lovely game with great performance. Yes, the drop to 900p in split screen is a tad disappointing, as is the 30fps 4 player mode, but in the end, it still looks great overall. And it was a ton of fun to boot. 
Playing with motion controls, you hold the two Joy-Con just like the dual sticks of Virtual On. The movement and weapon systems are all rather similar to Sega's arcade classic as well. It's simplified in comparison, of course, but it still feels like there's quite a skill ladder to climb here. You can't just waggle your way to victory here. You'll really need to focus on environment navigation while countering or dodging your opponent's attacks to succeed. And of course, if you're not a fan of motion controls, it's also playable with a gamepad. And while it was fun there, I did really prefer the motion controls in this case. Though I can only imagine that if this takes off in a big way, most players will probably end up going for the gamepad. We'll see. Thankfully, with the upcoming ARMS Test Punch, you'll be able to give it a shot yourself later this month. Probably a wise move by Nintendo. That should at least reveal what's in store for the online mode of the game. Anyways, that's all we have for now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow us on Twitter as always. And until next time, this is John signing off. <laughs>